Welcome back, everybody. It is game two of Navi versus Bears. Bears currently sitting one game up in this best of three upper bracket series in their GSL group. If they actually manage to win either game two or game three here, uh, they will move on into the playoffs with a top seed from their group to face off against the second seed, I believe, of Group B. Jesus, uh, all right, the draft kicking off rather quickly. Uh, Parker, we're going to have to get used to this, apparently. Uh, Navi oh going to go ahead and pick up the same one, too. Rubik Weaver and Bears, they're going to open with the same hero, Slardar, and then follow up with the Vengeful Spirit. Okay, teams are just adamant about these bands they want to use. I think Bears at least took something away from Secret that you want to ban this Magnus against Navi. Navi just play it so well around like certain melee carries, the Slark, the Juggernaut, that it seems teams just don't want to leave it in the pool. Luna is Luna. And uh, yeah, the same the same picks coming out. Navi, the other big reason I think we're seeing some of the same picks is they're often choosing to play on that dire side, even over first pick. So two games in a row, we see Navi dire side with second pick. And it's, yeah, same opening after second opening. But what about Four some of these other heroes, man? What what about what what happened to Ember Spirit? What happened uh, to that OP magic damage dealer? Is that is that hero just not worthy of the one two anymore? I, for these teams, I, I guess not. I think for some teams, absolutely. So it's I guess a team by team basis kind of thing. I think Slada is definitely worthy of first pick. That's like the yeah, most sure. stable first pick worthy hero like at the moment. Um, I was, the stat some of the stats on the hero I was seeing on this new pad. He's by like by far the most picked and banned hero of like the 7.0 7.01 era so I mean, the second place here didn't even come close to touching slaughter in terms of uh, pick rate so it's funny it's definitely uh, been a go-to for everyone you remember esl1 genting where they had such a terrible win rate that was slaughter <laughs> right yeah. yeah and people were talking like about yeah we're like is this hero actually first pick worthy and i was like i don't know guys I, I think these guys are picking it up for a reason and even, even after that even after yeah. such a terrible win rate people continue to pick him up and it seems like uh, it averages out pretty nicely in in, in Slardar's favor. The uh... it's hard to take like one small lamb where there's a small sample size of games too much to heart. Yeah, but yeah, I think the versatility is the biggest factor, right? That's that's what you said, right? Support off lane. Yeah. The fact that you could do both means he's a great first pick. I mean, it seems to just be very good in this meta where we're seeing you turn one, t not even a t oh, successful team fight, but one successful pickoff transitions into a Roshan. And that's exactly what Slada does. As soon as he supports Slada, seems to always still get blink around 15 to 18 minutes. And that's when you go for that smoke, get a pickoff, get Rosh. Any lineup with a Slada can take Rosh very effectively around that stage of the game, typically. And something that we're seeing just not teams are still i guess struggling to adjust to i mean there's only so much you can adjust to smoke ganks and smoke ganks more often than not they're going to find a pickoff and that's where teams are taking control of the game do navi have a plan here are they going to pick sf for, for themselves are they going to risk bears picking up third pick and try and counter it from there i, I noticed that's uh that is a notable missing hero on the draft pool so far when uh Bears do have Slardar and Vengeful Spirit to back it up. Yeah, that was the, the ban from game one that is no longer banned, but I think based on how that game one went with the Timbersaw, it's definitely earned itself a, a second stage ban. And then they take away the Shadow Fiend, so it kind of okay. acts as that, that two-pronged attack where it's a, a ban as well as a, a, a pick for Na'Vi that can be very effective in Dendi's hands, so... And it would have been a problem here. I think Bears with Shadow Fiend, we saw Fira play it the other day, would have been fit perfectly with his Venge Slider running. Yeah, absolutely. So Bears now have the opportunity to counter. I, I, I am going to presume that Navi are going to try and switch the Weaver into a support or offlane role from here. Um, just because having both your 1-2 uh, in the draft already in the first three pickups does feel like you're going to get countered. But Bears go for the lysidlar Slider combination, which I, I can't say is... Um, that huge against Weaver SF. Like, it, it definitely has its big power spike, but against these heroes specifically, Life Stealer can still be beaten down uh, if Weaver and SF still turn out to be core. So Bears must have another hero in mind um, that is going to be able to to deal with this. Yeah, I think their mid laner needs to be kind of a, a bit more of a, a playmaking hero at that point, something a bit more flexible, but... They won't know quite what that mid matchup is going to be. Again, Navi saving their last pick for Dendi. This has also been another recurring theme. We saw a 10th pick Tinker uh, yesterday in one of their big wins against Secret. Uh, we saw them last game try and go for that last pick TA to turn things in their favor. So 
They are uh, our team. We try and use that tenth pick to give Dendi a good matchup, but it doesn't always necessarily work out for them. Well, I was gonna say the the Quap and the Puck are still, you know, one two of Vada's more favorite heroes, and I think they both match up relatively well against the SF. But this time around, we do have an Ogre Magi, which is going to uh, make it a lot harder for whatever mid laner bears choose to go for. And, and maybe that would be too similar of a lineup, right? We saw yesterday the way that Na'Vi, despite, you know, nine of the same heroes, they were able to change their draft actually rather significantly with one different pickup and, and some shifting in roles as well. Um, and were able to change their whole entire lineup to beat Secret's exact same five. And, and that could be a problem if bears try and draft too similar to game one. Yeah, I know. Be interesting to see what they go for as far as the offlane goes uh, for Forip, since those tanky, annoying offlaners are kind of banned out. Some of the more like uh, initiation heavy ones are still in the pool. Uh, if you look at heroes like the the Centaur, the Batrider, but um, those yeah really pesky Timbersaw Underlord type ones are, are gone. Quop though, so they will get their mid lane. It doesn't really matter what order you mid your offlaner here. Oh, it could be slider offlaner, of course. So yeah, now, I'll be guessing a bit since uh, Bears will still be picking the next hero, but they want to make sure they get that pretty good matchup for the Corp versus SF. We saw uh, a couple, at least one Corp SF in uh, the opening match where Firo had a really rough time against the Corp, but ended up recovering through his jungle farm. Uh, this is maybe a bit more of an even matchup considering there's no good Magi this game, so it's not going to be a straight up 1v1, but still a, a, one of the better matchups for Corp. So if you if we're gonna lean towards because I, I agree with that. I think the the mech heavy heroes the the tankier heroes like those those have been all been banned away unless uh, Europe is gonna take a, a flavor out of NA and pull out of like an Abaddon offlane or something. So I'm gonna lean towards that sort of offlane. In which case I think it, you don't have a mech hero, but you definitely need some form of sustain for bears here. What in in your mind like I'm thinking of a, a support like something like a dazzle or, or something. What do you think bears need? Uh, I, I, I don't know if about the da the dazzle with the venge could be like not the ideal uh, support duo. They go axe, okay. So mm. I guess a comfort hero for Forev, a pretty good catch against the Weaver. So I think this is like a, a secondary initiator to go with the slider. Like you perhaps struggled to burst down the Weaver initially with your your first blinken. You've got a secondary hero to do so. Like they've got really good counter picks to the Weaver now. Two. Uh, Lincoln's piercing, like, initiators in the Axe and Slada. So uh, I, I like this pick, and I think it's something that Forev and Bears are going to be very comfortable playing around. Yeah, I think this... Uh, I, I actually didn't think of Axe, but his, if he actually gets a well-timed Blink Dagger Blade Mail, he's going to be a terror versus uh, both the Weaver and the SF, two relatively squishy but high physical damage dealing heroes. Um, so Navi... What are they going to pick up for uh, their offlane now? Are they going to get... Obviously, they're lacking an initiation, and that Ooh. is not the route they go for. They change the Weaver into offlane, and now get an Ursa Warrior. Ursa, a clear counter to Lifestealer. Great against Axe as well for most of the game. So uh, I like this yep. pickup quite a bit. This is the... Our opponents have picked too many Weaver counters. Let's put him in the offlane kind of strat we saw from Navi in one of their their games against uh, Secret as well. So it's like, all right, let's pick a hero. They've counted our Weaver. Let's make sure we have a safe lane farmer that is going to function a bit better this game and also work well against the heroes that Bears have picked up. So I like the Ursa. Um, the Ag Scepter this game against the Slider. This is probably one of the few heroes that actually completely straight up can, can deal with a Slider Lifestealer on his own. You get crushed, amped up. You just pop that Ag's in Rage and you get out of there. So... Uh, Ursa definitely one of the better heroes to have against Slada Life Sealer. What do you think about um, Navi's lack of initiation, though? They don't have a clear sustain hero, mm -hmm. nor do they have a um, a clear initiator. That's obviously going to be a problem. But Navi have worked around this before, right? They, yeah, they have. I think it was also like a pro like it actually was a problem. Like now you bring it up, like that, that game where they ran general in the offlane Weaver was when they had the safe lane Venge, which is. Mm -hmm. I guess kind of similar to a, maybe Ursa in terms of his initiation potential. He's a kind of hero where they were giving him some farm and they ended up transitioning him to this kind of awkward utility venge, but not having like a clear initiator. Biver on the Rubik is playing the five, like, well, often playing that five role, so not getting a lot of farm. You're not going to see uh, blinks and four staffs on him at good times, does limit their ways into these fights. So Pycat needs to really, to me, in my mind, needs to snowball this game to be 
uh, effective. If we're looking at an even game, I don't see Ursa fighting well into bears because they're going to be going for those four staffs, kiting items, and trying to just yeah. play around the Ursa as best as possible. Yeah, I mean, just naturally, they have some pretty good kite, right? They've got... Uh... I mean, they've got Axe to maybe be able to stop Ursa's initiation. They've got the, the Queen of Pain with the mobility, Slardo with the mobility, and a little bit of kiting as well, and even the Vengeful Spirit to be able to pull a hero out of that danger zone um, with the swap. So I, I feel like PyCat, you're right, really does need to snowball, and if Bears start getting some of those basic mid-game items, he's going to have tougher and tougher of time. But... They do have two other cores behind them that can act as damage dealers, which means they probably have better late game, even if they are lacking the initiation. Uh, team fights are going to be a little bit messy, I think, later on to the game. It's going to be very hard for Navi to get uh, clean jumps in, but they may have uh, just due to the nature of having three damage dealing cores, they may have better late game. Yeah. Dendi's going to be playing more like the, the farm priority carry in this game, even more so in that late game, because he's the hero that isn't going to get kited badly. Like, you can have that Hurricane Pike, you can have the BKB, and not have to worry quite as much, but we'll see if we even get to that point. If Na'Vi can have a strong enough early game, uh, perhaps they don't have to worry about the Ursa getting kited all too much. But for now, uh, Shadow Fiend is getting bullied a bit by Yap, so despite the Ogre's presence, this is uh, proving to not be the most straightforward of lanes for Na'Vi. What... <laughs> What a weird, what a weird world that Dota is right now. Two supports, both go mid, and they both completely ignore each other and run at the opposing uh, mid hero and do their damage in the first couple yep. of minute and a half or so, and then they're probably going to, uh, I presume they're going to split up around two, two and a half minutes, but we'll see Yapsor is continuing to put the pressure on Dendi, forcing him to use some of his regen. I mean, Dendi really struggled to get last hits that first couple of waves until Iron Man and him started timing some of those last hits together. Does get a little bit better uh, at this point now with Yapso just leaving the lane for even a split second. Look, got Dendi a couple of last hits. He needs those early souls. Uh, if he can't get those early souls, uh, like Iron Man can't leave until he's got at least like maybe 10 or so souls to play around against the Queen of Pain. It's an interesting choice. I kind of like it uh, for Rev opting for level 2 Battle Hunger against PyCat. He's trying to use it to pull back the creep wave while also kiting PyCat, um, making sure he doesn't have the movement speed to build up those Fury Swipes. General dropping a little bit low underneath the Tier 1 tower. Looks like he tried to get aggressive on a Fero while the bugs were out. Um, but I just wanted to, to talk about Forev and his choice to actually fully try and make this lane work against an Ursa Rubik, a good disabling hero combined with the presence of Fury Swipes. Uh, I feel like this is going to be either a great choice or one that turns into a lot of feeding. Yeah, this is where you typically expect to see like that Iron Talon, like I'm just going to go jungle and play, take the safe approach. But yeah, four of us, for now, at least getting some... All right, experience, couple CS here and there. He's got a side pull off uh, using the neutrals until Biver. It's going to come in and be a little bit disruptive of that one. But yeah, I mean, on paper, this should be a lane where four really just, just gets nothing. But so far, so good. Oh, what? General actually picks it up. He saw the d double damage oh, earlier, but yeah. I did not imagine that. Oh, oh God, it's happening. <laughs> God. Like, you, you're like, I missed the couple of lanes. Let's quickly switch my camera there and try and be, be like Detective Cap, try and figure out what happened. And then as you're trying to fit, piece things together, what happened, you missed something elsewhere. I did the exact same thing, just it wasn't shown. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be so many T-Tours. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually crying right now. All right, so Dendi... Dies to Fada. Looks like the dual lane works out to the favor of Bears, but uh, General, as a sole offlaner, thanks to a double damage rune, managed to kill Firo. What a big kill that is. Yeah. He was already fairly low, and that DD couldn't catch him by surprise. They try and turn around and bottom, but he gets away from that early aggression. And this offlane Weaver, already proving very effective, goes for the bottle build. Something speculated to be like one of the really popular items to get because of all the extra runes and the ability to constantly refill your bottle, uh, but hasn't quite been as prominent, perhaps, as some people theory crafted. Yeah, I think part of it is that, that offlaners actually spend a decent amount of time in lane, or at least most of them, and that boundary rune is just so far behind, you almost don't want to leave for it. So mm -hmm. it kind of turns out, I think it, you just need high mobility here. His general, almost with the Shikuchi, is able to catch up to Fada before he blinks and get the extra damage needed. To finish him off after the raise, but not quite enough. He'll actually, he's here for runes, apparently. General's going to gobble all of them up. He gets an invis rune, and we'll see what he can do with this at level four. Yeah. 
I think the other really tough point about getting bottle and offlaners is it's a big gold investment. Like every small bit of gold as an offlaner, you need to like use wisely. Like that that boots as fast as possible, the stout shield, like all these small items make such a big difference for an offlaner that saving up 660 gold means you're getting way less out of the lane because you don't have those value items. Yeah. Weaver doesn't need the boots though because you've got Shikuchi, so one of the few heroes that perhaps can go for this build. What an what an odd um situation this is where general comes to the mid lane and it's not even like that shikuchi in is going to be all that effective right even if he throws out swarm fodder's just going to blink back he he is seeming to be willing to play a, a little bit of a harassment role just to secure dendy that much more farm despite you know his lane was going fine you know i, I was completely surprised when i saw him up at the top rune i was like wasn't your lane going great weren't you just going to continue to be in lane and get farm and and do good things but general putting dendy's farm still at a higher priority than his own despite a great start yeah the the initial move where they all like where fatty gets really low makes sense Ooh, top lane for ev oh he's gonna get dove here too many fury swipe stacks will end up going down so for ev finally well, goes down we kind of expected it was gonna happen eventually against that lane yes and he's what how much he's four and a half boots poor man shield <laughs> I don't know, I don't feel like he's getting enough farm and XP out of this lane to fully justify it. Ursa is still free farming. Daddy's dead. So. Yeah, so it gets him with the rotation from yeah. behind through the trees, nicely set up. And Ferev may go down again here as uh, RMN, his presence in lane may be noted, or lack of presence in mid. Yeah, they're actually going to ping him out. They they know RMN is trying to wrap on Ferev and they're going to run into him. Yeah, Pike had a bit low on HP and even mana as well, so... The TP in this may just be a unfortunate death for RMN. Trying to make some plays happen up top, but his teammates just weren't quite in good fighting shape. Yeah, nice rotation. Early TP from Adam secures another kill. Firo seems Dendi. to be doing fine for himself. Dendi's levels have really suffered. I mean, he's had so many heroes splitting with him in this mid lane. He's not even level 5 yet. We're six and a half minutes in. Crop, meanwhile, has surpassed the level 6 point, so... Dendi, I imagine, may just fall back in this jungle, but with just level 2 raises, that's not exactly the easiest thing to do. We'll just triple raise a neutral camp to get that level 5.5, but this has been a slow start for the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to need a lot more help from Na'Vi to make this work. A rotation in, they might just be able to catch Biver. He actually telekinesis over to stop for Reb, but that means the Amps are still in range to be able to get this crush with Fada teeping in. They managed to get a beautiful Sonic Wave. It's not enough to finish off PyCat, however. Yapsor is going to put it to himself to try and finish him off, but the crush isn't enough. Now he's going to end up dying behind the tower. PyCat survives, and Fada doesn't actually opt to try and go for that kill. Didn't have the mana to back it up. It looks like a, a blink and nuke was not possible. Yeah, that starts off well, but giving the, the slider kill up makes it a bit better as far as Na'Vi are concerned. And they only lose the support Rubik there, so not really all too bad. And while this is going on, Weaver's still pressuring that bottom lane, making life still have a bit of a rougher time. And they found another kill up top, potentially, for it getting going on here. But without the Ursa, not the easiest of kills. They still have the stun. They have another Fate Bolt. I've got the magic damage. Yep. So, Ferev dies. I, I think his laning phase, you know, I have to say, I, I think he was, what he did in the first, like, four levels was really res respectable as the axe. I was watching him very intently because I was like, man, how's he going to make this work? And he was doing this magnificent uh, uh, pulling constantly of the creeps, drawing aggro time after time, using the battle hunger. But now it has turned into a bit of a feed fest as these multiple rotations have started coming in. And Forever is going to be gone on once again. Fury swipes, beginning to stack up. Pycat thinking he can make this work, but can't actually hit the slow. And decides against diving the tower. A failed attempt like that does set Pycat back. That's a couple of Earth Shocks. He's already used up two thirds of his mana pool now and his half HP. So, got to really make the aggression count as an Ursa. No easy shrine access, uh, and Pycat will be somewhat hampered. So, I mean, plays like that definitely. That that's where I feel like okay, that's a good result for before Evan. He's level six. He's actually able to start contesting this lane a bit better now and he's going very aggressive with the battle hunger once more four to four a slight lead for navi right now about two thousand gold i say slight two thousand gold is not yeah. much to uh smirk out there and a little bit of experience buff despite dendy having a, a rough laning phase he has kind of recovered thanks in part to that double stack 
at the, uh, what was it, seven minute mark or something like that. Fada tries to pressure him some more, but RMN is in lane. Fada, not one to back down from 1v2, <laughs> continues to harass the tanky ogre as best as he can. Yapser is going to be able to come in for the side, hit the crush. They also have the follow-up magic missile. But again, RMN is not the hero you want to go for in these situations. They really wanted to catch Dendi with that wraparound, but failed to find him in time with General TPing in. They get a quick kill on Adam. Yep. Get the quick kill, turn around. Dendi happily gets his level 7 now, and... Overall, yeah, the lane stage going very well for them. I think that was almost like a, a requirement of their draft. Um, running the safe lane Ursa as a pseudo counter pick. The off lane Weaver's a hero that doesn't really want to play from behind. You're expecting your off lane Weaver to get more farm than like an enemy initiating type off laner because they're the hero that you're picking to get that mid game bleak and have an impact. Weaver's a hero you're picking to get some farm and not be starved for, for items as well as for uh, experience. So the fact General's doing as well as he, he's doing is very, is almost is necessary for Na'Vi. He's doing much better than I expected, like level 9 already. He's one of the highest levels in the game, but uh, this is going to make sure that Na'Vi have a better time uh, helping Dendi get the space and room he needs to transition into that mid-game. Bureau trying to get some damage done onto the tower, but General is there always to make sure there's not too much pressure. Dendi is actually going to turn that rotation that he made into the jungle and was clearing through some stacks and such into pressure onto the tier 1 tower rather early. Pycat with the early Helma Dominator is going to help out. He takes the uh, Radiant Siege Creep and away they go. The first tower to be pressured. Don't think Bears... They're going to try and rotate their two supports and maybe have TPs after that. Fada's going to get the mid lane in position to get a lot of damage done while he waits for Yapsors and Adam's Smoke Gank, but... Is it going to turn into more? Ursa has now rotated out, which means the Yapser wants to be able to find the initiation here. Tries to come forward. Swap back. Adam unable to get a lock on anybody but RMN. Bears only picking up the Ogre there for the Dire picking up that offlane tower. Not really what they hope for. Uh, but yep. still. That looked yeah. very dangerous for Navi. I think Pycat misread what was going on. Uh, I imagine. I think he assumed that Bears were not defending top. So he's like, all right, they're not defending. I'm just going to TP mid and try and deny this tower or at least prevent it from going down. But he TPs at a time where bears are trying to initiate. So Na'Vi perhaps fortunate to only lose the one support there as uh, they managed to get the Shadow Fiend and the Ursa both out safely. And that's thanks in large part to uh, Biver and his telekinesis well-timed as Yapsor tries to make his uh, initiation. They're going to rotate from mid. Looks like into the bottom lane, continuing to try and just bully these outer towers. Uh, they actually got to smoke up with this rotation, but I hesitate to say that they're going to be able to find anything for Evis. Already hit his way into the trees. He's died enough this game, it seems. He's going to be playing a lot more conservatively. It's kind of interesting, the use of this SF, who, who traditionally would be spending a lot more time farming in the jungle. Pycat needs some help here. The TP rotations start occurring. Bears have forced that much. Meanwhile, General is harassing Forever a little bit inside the jungle. Nothing should come of that. They're going to go back oh, into the top lane. Biver is still going to be the target here. Amplify damage. Make short work of him with physical damage required. Iron Man is still sitting on top of them. Though with the invis, Dendi is going to be able to get a couple of rays, but the pop out there with the infest, and that's a little bit of surprise to Dendi. Now Pycat has to pop the enrage out, but they're just going to kite him around until the enrage fails, and they're going to be able to finish him off, or maybe not. Iron Man Nicely timed stun on Yaps or just before the crush can go, so bears. Bottom? Is Forever gonna die? General's hunting him down. Forever's gonna juke this one out somehow. Hiding the <laughs> trees, cut down a tree. General is still kinda on him. Shikuchi's through him, finds Forever for a second. Forever, yeah, he's finally gonna go down. Nice kill. Axe was very close to his blink dagger, so killing him when he when he did is important for Navi. Slow down those blink timings. That's where the life cell it doesn't have to wait for the support slider to farm a blink this game. The, the core axe is going to have one at a much better time. But for bears that fight at top lane, getting the kill on Dendi pans up very nicely for them. Navi not expecting the infested life sealer. Mid lane, there is a blink from Biver with a lift, but I don't think they've got the damage here. Very close, but realistically, Fata always had the HP to survive the combo and blink on out. Yeah, I think um, many people. Don't expect the tankiness of this Queen of Pain build 
because the the you when you get this shreds and you have it on strength and you complete the veil of discord you get a decent amount of, of stats out of this right six strength six armor on top of that then you have the big uh, strength tread increase in hp as well and you end up just being able to survive through almost anything it's one of i think queen of pain's biggest power spikes is this level 10 area and she there's actually, I, I didn't realize Corp level 10 talent, there's a plus 5 strength which Fat has gone for. I didn't, I don't know if most Corps go for this. I feel like. No, I, I don't think they do. More commonly see the damage. Plus 5 strength sounds like pretty crap compared to some <laughs> of the other, other talents in the game. I'm like, uh, yeah. is that really what you get? I mean, for the playstyle, like survivability, like we often see a lot of the, in the pro scene, like often players will lean towards more of the plus HP uh, talents, even when the other one sounds like, oh, you do damage. Like, more often than not, when you're playing as a five-man unit, damage isn't the issue. It's just staying alive. General continues to be quite the nuisance here in this bottom lane. Has uh, almost Lincoln's being built up as he's about to finish up that ultimate orb. The Radiant claiming uh, a tower here. Looks like that top lane tower ends up going down. Forever's going to be able to finish off his blink dagger off of that. Whoop! The, the, that wasn't the call. Maybe it's a good thing he didn't go, though, because PyCat is also here inside the jungle. He actually blinks away from PyCat. They're still going to try and hunt down Yapsir, though. Tries to go for the TP out. They don't have a telekinesis, so no stun available. Yapsir clean escape. That could have been disastrous for Bears. Their first blink dagger reveal of the axe could have actually gone completely awry. If he did actually get that call, he might have just been gobbled up by PyCat. <laughs> That's some, some good news, and this is what Na'Vi want to get aggressive. They've got this Aegis. They found Adam now, who's on a bit of a warding mission. Uh, pays for that with his life for him. Oh, no! Another missed call for Ev. He hoped to be able to catch PyCat and them to be able to burst him down with the Infest combination. He now pops out now to force Na'Vi back away from Forev, but an off game for our off laner of Bears, it seems. Again, like another call where even if he lands, I don't think much is going to come from it. PyCat having an Aegis. Uh, has this pretty good tankiness in general at this stage of the start at, at this stage so he's not gonna get immediately bursted down by that life sealer infest so wasn't the ideal target anyways and I think bears just yeah probably ends up okay for them that they just were able to get a clean disengage and back off and wait for a, a better timing to go for that smoke play maybe Absor will have better luck in his initiation he has 1800 golds and is being given the off lane for now to try and finish up that blink dagger the rest of bears playing uh inside their jungle right now trying to scout out some of these wards placed aggressively by navi they'll get one of them probably not going to find this one though i'm actually going to go for fada here i think they were hoping fada would blink to the left hand side and maybe pycat could catch him blinking forward hitting that slow but no such luck fada just blinks into the trees tp's out yep one of the downsides for Navi right now is they don't have the best building siege. Perhaps with a couple more items on SF and Weaver, that they'll be able to make up for that. But it will be a Lincoln's first. Weaver going for the more defensive build. Dendi wanting stats and HP as well. Again, prioritizing survivability. But they have an Aegis Ursa. This is more like a let's fight. Let's get on top of bears and try and go for kills rather than go for towers. If they play keep away, you take those towers, but you do push at a pretty slow pace. Good Smoke news is this time. mid tier one is pretty low, though, so... Double blink daggers. Yapsor, oh, he's going to wrap Classic. around. Aramed is going to be able to scout out uh, at least one here. Forever's going to be able to jump on him, but the back line's still coming in. They managed to kill the Rubik. Ogre is also down. Two supports dead from Navi, but Firo's now out of that rage and stuck close range with Pycat. He's actually in some serious trouble. Yapsor needs to be able to help him out. He blinks forward. A denied tower from Fada in the middle of this engagement. Firo will manage to get away from PyCat there. So an offlaner in exchange for the two supports. I thought that engagement was going to go so much better for Bears watching Yapsor and uh, and Firo wrap around the backside. But Navi, uh, gods, tell me what, what happened to their side. They got real aggressive. I mean, again, it was like the classic Iron Man play. He's hiding in some trees in a position to scout out the smoke gank and had the lane observe ward. But Navi were so fast, they immediately dropped the sentry, dewatered it, and then he blinked. Like, he didn't even have any vision of the ogre. He just guessed where Iron Man was. Like, you know that ward there in your smoke pop? You're like, okay, mm -hmm. they're hiding in these trees, waiting to pop that smoke and trying to abuse their vision advantage. So it was a really heads-up play uh, coming in from, from Forev on the axe. He made up for some of his earlier missed calls and uh, puts him in a nice spot. Potential follow-up kill on PyCat, his Aegis... Still up for another 20, 30 seconds, so not really the ideal timing to go for the kill, but yeah, it looks like bears won't go chasing. This uh, 
these wards have been pretty on point for for Navi, it seems, for the most part. Some of them are a little bit different, but it is catching bears unaware. Nice landing ward does give PyCat the uh, heads up about the rotation. They're going to go back to mid here. Very rapid. They see naturally bears are going to fall back after a miss gank like that. So Navi think it's their time to get aggressive, especially with the Aegis expiring. Bears may not expect this one. Smoke pops. Biver sees Adam. That'll be their victim. Don't think they're going to be able to make much more of it, though. Forever actually TPs into the shrine, prepared to fight if uh, Navi continued to go for the high ground. Anything yeah, it doesn't look like this, something they are able to, to 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 approach at this stage. Navi did have general kind of aggressively in the jungle, more so for the the scouting reasons than anything else. Oh, Kuria, Arthur says hello, gets away with that one and completes his orchid now. So. It's a bit tougher for the Ursa to rely on the Enrage, and even when he gets that Aghanim Scepter, if he gets orchided up, he will be getting blown up by this Queen of Pain. How's Dendi doing in farm? He's getting closer to his Manta. That'll be very important against that Orchid of Fadas. Yep. I, think I feel like you want your Shadow Fiend to be like out farming the other two cores of your team. Like I feel like this is where yeah. Navi would be like they'd rather see like a 10k net worth Shadow Fiend and maybe a bit less farm on the Weaver or the Ursa. But it does seem like Dendi's still in that kind of catch up phase. Yeah, this I think is a very prime opportunity. I mean, you hit this big power spike. The Aegis is now down. You know that Navi just blew through another smoke as well. I think Bears really need to get aggressive here and it looks like they're to start this off with Fauna pushing in the bottom lane and the rest of bears kind of baiting him out they may just run into navi here biver's gonna tp out at the perfect time oh or cancels it they think oh. twice about this the dire scan is successful and now they're thinking about going for this one bears and navi they're so close together here Vrev, he's passed by two of these navi heroes just by inches inside this jungle it looks like nothing is going to come of it, though. Bears. <laughs> I love Dota 2 Fog of wow. War. That's, like, uh, that's probably one of my favorite things about Dota, is just the way Fog of War works. All right, Fada pops Possibly out again. Possibly Fata in trouble. I was about to say, I think Biver really wants to go on Fada here, and the team has finally left him. They are going to try and make a go here. He does have a blink coming up in a second. Will manage to get away. Don't think uh, Biver by himself can actually fight this one out, but oh, a missed Sonic Wave. Fate Bolt goes down. Biver can't actually steal anything, though, to finish off the Queen of Pain. That, was, uh, that wasn't the greatest thing. Meanwhile, we did miss another engagement. Firo managed to kill RMN, but PyCat got Yapsor in return. Where was that at? That was the top lane. Not, no, no clue what happened other than, like, okay, Slider's probably a Slider Lifestealer bomb. Uh, onto the Ogre, and then there was a return kill from PyCat, who it looks like TP'd out after getting the kill. I imagine he had to TP away from the the, the Lifestealer Slider post uh, kill. So. Well, we're going to have that Aghanim Scepter coming in quick. They are going... Oh, no, Forev. Missed that call. Now he's going to be pulled back. Firo is actually still going to pop out. Goes for Denny. Thinks better of it, though, with that ultimate coming out. Firo is going to lose his rage soon. Yaps are a beautiful save. A three-man crush, but there's still the jump forward here from Biver. Has a little bit of nuking power, and they finally do get him. Dendi finishes him off. They turn their attention back towards that tier two, and Bears can do nothing but split push from now. That is a, a tough call to miss. You melt so fast as an axe there to the the magic damage from the razors and the rest of the navi lineup when you miss that call and very good punish and immediately upon getting it navi are looking for that extra follow-up kill yeah so nice stealing away a double damage yeah. adam maybe going to be the one getting no oh, just managed to elude uh, general it looks like yeah, General wants to finish up his Diffusal Blade, and I think he, he actually has it with this neutral keep camp, so... Yep. Off of those last couple of fights, Navi pull a bit further ahead. It's like this 6,000-ish net worth lead. In my mind, like, even though they've got this three-call lineup, I feel like they need to be playing from ahead. Like, I don't actually think their late game is necessarily better just because of the initiation advantage coming in from Bears. Like, having the Axe and the Slider in the late game, to me, is a bigger deal than, like, having a Weaver, like, pseudo-carry, because I think Na'Vi's very single-target focus, and that's going to start to become an issue for them the longer this game goes. Yeah, I... Tendency to agree here. The fresh Roshan is up. 
both teams are probably going to be fighting around that as best as possible. Navi are heavily pushing in bottom, see if they can force some rotations. And they do scout out that Roshan is up. So if they can actually force a couple of heroes down to the bottom lane, it may give them a better opportunity. Maybe not to do Roshan, but maybe even just set up, get some nice vision around the pit because that's what they're missing right now. Bears, meanwhile, they have it in spades. They've got this ward actually in the ancient camp. They've got a, also a mid ward around the Roshan area as well. They're all smoked up, ready to go. They're going to go for a full five man smoke entrance into the jungle. See if the Slaughter Lifestealer can lead things off, get a quick kill on a core, and turn that into something more. Again, the, the side lane split push threat is there, and Navi are grouping up as if they're ready to fight this one, though. Jesus, General just teeping straight onto that shrine like that. Doesn't run Navi into any of yeah, in Navi's like, are they in Rose? They only yeah. just recently sent that Kobold into there to scout, so there was a, a good period of time where they were playing a bit blind and worried about that Rose. They TP in and go for a smoke of their own. Now it's Navi's turn to smoke and push out. And Yapsor is in a position to actually kill some of the smoke. He can still get out, too. They managed to get the ward down, but almost getting the fire blast. That would have been big if RMN and his quick reactions could have stopped that escape from Yapsor. But uh, now Pycat is actually inside the pit, soloing it up. The amplified damage cross of Hayes actually stolen by the Rubik. This gets really easy for Navi. Holy crap. Some of those right clicks felt like they were doing like 10% of Roche's HP towards yeah. the end there. That is one of the faster Roche's I've seen. It, it honestly feels like Roche is getting easier and easier to kill despite... Didn't it get buffed in the latest patches? At least as far as like how hard kill it's meant to be? I, I don't know. And you know, it just seems squishier all the time. If it wasn't for all the TPs out and smokes and everything that happens in the, you know, the minute zero area, first, uh, you know, level... Level zero, level one Roche, it's very easy. Swap back, all right, a little bit of Manta. We're good, Dendy's okay. He also had a haste rune in his pocket, so no problems there. But yeah, we were doing the other way, uh, the other day. Level one Roche is pretty easy too. I feel yes. like Roche needs some some big boy buffs, man. He needs a lot more. Yeah, they, because they, at some point it was like, oh, let's give him some more armor so you don't just kill him with all these minus armor strats so easily, but Teams just start picking more minus armor, and now they've made it so that spells damage suddenly has become more effective against Roche. So we're seeing even, even these magic damage heroes help against Roche. But even so, as it stands, Navi with Aegis can force the high ground push at top, something they're very likely to do just to make sure that bears come back to defend. And Pycat's already blinking up there to get vision, sees no one, and that means they can get some free hits before bears even get back. Yeah, I think they saw that tier one tower still hadn't dropped yet, and they were ready to go for the high ground. General is going to be called up here. Crushed as well. Pop out. Maybe they can first him. Yeah, they got him. Fada, actually, with the ultimate, is able to finish him off. Now the ultimate goes down from Dendi. That's going to be scared back some of bears, but they have the shrine to work back. They're still full HP and a decent amount of mana as well. Looks like they still managed to get the, the Slardar in the very back lines. How the hell did he do that? Yeah, I, I saw him, like, try and chase him down with a right click, but how did he... It must have been okay. Manta Illusions or something. Yeah, that was crazy. I saw him get done like 20 HP and then just went back to the main fight because it looked like he was going to just live and get back to base. So I'm not, not sure what ended up chasing him down to kill him all. But yeah, all I can think of is Manta Illusions since Dendi got credited the kill. All right, well, but... that is uh, still a big win there for Navi. Even if they did lose General, they got a Tier 3 tower like that, and that'll be a huge amount of progression and net worth for the other two cores. And there was also very early stages of the Aegis, so they've still got a good two and a half minutes of time on this to go for another aggressive play. I think PyCat's probably going to feel pretty good about himself having the Aegis as well as the Ag Scepter, so he's not really prone to getting jumped on. It's the Weaver who didn't have the good defensive capabilities there, but that's one of those things where if they're going to fully commit everything, like including the Sonic Whip to kill off the Weaver, it really means that the, the SF and the, the Ursa are going to have full reign over the fight. Problem is for Ursa, he couldn't really lock on to anyone, so we'll see if Pycat, with this newly picked up Bashir, can kind of make up for that problem. He's got that extra bit of lockdown now. General! Oh, he gets spotted out there! Instantly, Yapsor and Ferev both jump on him. General goes down again, and that is, that is a significant That's loss because timing, yeah. Navi only had two minutes to work with this Aegis. Now they're only going to have one minute if they wait for General, and that that's kind of cutting it close. Yep, and Bears have full vision of them. This high ground ward, they are looking to set up either to take a fight or at least to make sure that Navi 
unable just to push down this lane from They've behind. They've got the comes fresh the AC too. Here comes the Shrine TPs. The App Store is definitely going to find something here. A missed call from Ferret, but it doesn't matter. They've already got the Rubik down. Viral has to deal with Pycat, though. He immediately starts running away. Open wounds, kiting Pycat back. Dendi lets go of the Requiem, trying to lessen some of that damage, but Bears can still fight it out as long as they can get the kite. Nice Sonic Wave finishes off RMN. Ferret does manage to dance back ahead of Dendi. Another Shrine activated, and Bears go back in once again. They've kited Navi well enough. They can finish off this engagement in style. Killing off Dendi, looking for Pycat, who's deep inside the trees. Doesn't actually have a TP, and if they made that read, it doesn't look like they did, but he had no way to be able to get out of this situation. He just had that Aegis filling up his inventory, so. That, uh, Navia just slightly crumbling here, it feels like. Oh, you Thera think? may walk into uh, the Ursa at this point. But, I was about uh, to say, that, Py Pycat sees him. Do you think he's actually trying to kill Firo? A real quick kill with this Aegis still? Yeah, he yeah, sees be the other heroes play. defending base. Yeah, you may as well go, f uh, quickly go for it. And I guess without the TP, it means you can't just panic TP out if things start going bad for you. And the AC is some survivability. But all it's going to take is a potential one, a single bash, and you've you've got this kill. What do you bet so. the team's doing the calculations for him? All right, they they TP yeah. at least one hero onto the shrine. They're all you know pretty far deep into the base. You've got uh, all these fury swipes. I think he's got the damage. One, oh, he's got the one single overpower, but yeah, six six quick right clicks with an enrage. Should be close. I think he definitely gets if, if he hits the Earth Shock, I think he's definitely dead. Yeah, that's that's actually yeah, gonna be the big thing. Getting that Earth Shock damage for that extra little bit to tick it over. Oh, he doesn't have rage on Life Stealer, so he has to hit it. Oh yeah. Yeah, so. no rage means this is guaranteed kill really you can almost get won't quite get a second to shook off if he needs that extra time fat has got no mana to help out anyway so fat is out of the picture but yeah i think i mean more importantly for navi is this last couple minutes has been disastrous for them that first high ground when they got the tier three was fine but everything that happened after that on their second go with the ages uh the weaver getting tracked at mid lane and getting picked off and then everything that happened underneath the observer ward there it was one of those scenarios where they got the sentry ward there but it was like as soon as they saw like the observer they probably knew like oh crap we're in trouble they're about to jump on us and that's exactly what happened with the slada first getting the rubik you take that lift and spell still out of the picture s Evanosa just like they're rec rooms being thrown dendy's like right clicking people here and there but there's enough like survivability across the bez side of things with the ac and just in general, like most of these heroes are pretty tanky. Quop has Veil, Blade Mail, and the Soul Booster, so more than enough survivability for the Queen of Pain. There's no easy kills for Dendi in these fights. The easiest one is the Slaughter, but that Slaughter sprints away. Like he couldn't really stay on top of the Slaughter uh, without a lift or an Ogre stun, but the two supports instantly melt. Yeah, Dendi and the rest of Navi, I think I think they just needed uh, they didn't have very clear decision making, I think. They they needed to immediately back out as soon as they lost general, but Pycat, not going for the clap just yet. He waits a little bit, now goes for it, slowed down by the open wounds. The enrage is gonna take that one off, gets the bash necessary to finish off that kill. The TP does come in from Ferev, slowing down Pycat. Now the rest of the TPs are gonna be able to follow that one up. Pycat is gonna lose his Aegis. They get the coal. And they should be able to finish up a second time here. Pycat goes for the quick blink. Nicely played. None of Bears were actually close enough to be able to catch that blink. So he may still be able to get away. One second. Oh, another one. Oh, he gets hit. Barely. Yapsor managed to connect. And that definitely should be at the end of Pycat. He does have some help coming in. Biver's going to be able to help out a little bit with his telekinesis, slowing down the damage, but Pycat still gets dropped, and now Biver's just going to be the extra kill. RMN actually abandoned him on that one. He's like, nope, I'm not being a part of that engagement. Left the two of them to die. Yeah, it's kind of tough. You like you formulate some plan in your mind, and you lose a lot of that flow and momentum when that big pause comes in, but it was always going to be a tough escape post-kill for Pycat, and couldn't quite get that kill quick enough and as a result Navi lose another key hero at a key time of this game they uh giving bears a lot of room to get some of these luxury type items like the solar crest on the slada and uh the octarine core now complete on fata so once he gets to that level 25 stage things look very rough for Navi Yapsor seems pretty set on this item build even against the ursa refusing to go for the force staff what are your thoughts I like it 
against these like single target physical damage drafts, I think it's fantastic because we're not really looking at a Weaver or an SF or an Ur like Ursa. Like they, I mean, mm -hmm. Ursa can enrage out of it, but there's a lot of things he's going to have to enrage out of. So uh, I think you can always time that solo crest or put it on a teammate, and you, it's always going to be a very useful, effective item. And I think uh, one of the kind of maybe underbought and undervalued items in the game. Navi's draft is like the perfect example of a draft where you want to have a solar crest on your team if possible. Yeah, I think uh, I really like the fact that you said undervalued because I feel like solar crest uh, is, was an item that was you know, all the rage for a certain point in time and then uh, nobody started picking it up. It just kind of fell by the wayside and uh, now it seems Yapsor and a couple other supports have uh, started bringing this item back into the fold again. Quick escape there away from Navi, who uh, heard their smoke did get popped. At least Bivers did. The rest of the team is still trying to make this work, though. Another blink out, but a telekinesis actually does manage to grab Yapsor. They, Yapsor is definitely dead, but Firo may also be in trouble. He's raged up, trying to get back to the, uh, his base. Navi are trying to pursue out as best they can. A swamp back just to make sure that life stealer does not get caught in any way. And I think General forgot about his defusal blade there. Could have at least slowed down the axe towards the end with that with the offensive defusal. Perhaps, I don't know if they guarantee getting a second kill with a telekinesis they do, but that may have been a bit out of range. But either way, Navi at least get the kill. Are able to kind of settle back with their lanes. Try and ideally get some aggressive wards down, although they don't have much to play around with right now. And Fingers crossed for them, they are looking for that next Roshan to uh, set themselves up to perhaps pose some further aggression towards this top lane where they've already taken a tier 3 tower. It is exposed, but they also just don't want this game to drag too much longer. The lifestyle is going to be getting some late game mines of his own, the Queen of Pain's getting close to that level 25, and the Ursa is just going to start to fall off and get kited the longer this game goes on. Yeah, Vada's going to turn into full Porcupine here with the uh, Blade Mail, and he's got queued up uh, a Mjolnir, so if he actually gets that static charge out, he blinks forward with that level 25, has that invulnerability, pops the Blade Mail, pops the static charge, and Navi are just going to have to ignore him the uh, the entirety of that Blade Mail. So this is this is going to get pretty rough for, for Navi here. They... I mean, they'll have some upgrades coming in, some pretty decent ones. They have the the Manta coming in for General. Looks like AC is the next choice for Dendi, uh, trying to tank up a little bit more against that Life Stealer Slardar combination. And we'll also have the the guaranteed lockdown of the Abyssal Blade. But they uh, they do have to worry about Bears uh, running them over at this point because I think this is one of the bigger peaks that Bears is going to receive. Uh, maybe wait out the Basher potentially on Firo, but I'm not even sure if you want to wait for, for that necessarily. Yeah, I think Bears may just be thinking, let's let's go, 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 if they can find an opening to get a good jump with that Slider Life Steal Bomb once again. Dendi does now hit level 20, which is a big boost in his damage output. He gets an extra oh, yeah. 72 damage with that talent. One of the better level 20 talents out there, and... He's something, he, often it feels like in these fights, like he can stay alive, he can right, get it like three or four right clicks off before the heroes just get away from him. But now I feel like he's actually going to hit a lot harder and uh, be a much bigger threat to the bear side. Another uh, successful scan from the Radiant, but I don't think that's actually going to tell them too much. They know Roshan could be coming in sometime soon. They have to fear that Navi are doing it right now. They're going to go for the smoke, see if they can intercept this Roshan, but it's not even up. They may still run into Navi, though. Navi are playing around the high ground areas of Rosh, taking the Radiant Shine, trying to play on this dire jungle side as well. Looks like the General was able to pop that smoke, and Bears are going to have to uh, give control of the Roshan pit back over to Navi once again and see if they can find a different way to uh, to get their initiation. Navi trying to loop around, and that observer, I don't believe, scouted them going up that ramp necessarily, but they'll show themselves a bit at top lane. Very hard for bears to play this stage of the game because Ursa can always just blink in and solo Roshan, and they kill it so damn fast, but... The teams have kind of swapped side here. Bears are ready to engage towards the pit. They know where Navi are, and they're going to try and get in here and stop this one, but it's going to be, looks like, too late. Yeah, Swarm makes things really hard. They are going to be able to get Biver in the back lines. At the same time, Forever gets forced out forward, but he gets caught by RMN. 
Adam managed to swap him out and gets the stun onto RMN. Fada is being pursued out by General, but another call goes out. Dendi is actually going to be losing his Aegis here. Fada dances away from General a little bit further out of mana now, but General has to retreat as now all the supports are going to be focused on him, giving Fada the help he desperately needed. Firo gets bashed up, but Dendi and Pycat realize with all the supporting crew of Navi gone, they have to start retreating. There's a big numbers advantage going the way of Bears now, even if these two cores are quite strong. Not sure if they can do this by themselves. He's trying to go for Fada. Pycat makes his initiation. Now the buybacks start coming in, but Pycat immediately gets bashed up, controlled, and it's just going to be the SF who makes his escape. Bivers buyback will be completely unwarranted. Looks like the push at the top lane did some okay damage on a melee Rex, but ultimately it will regen. Uh, Navi just losing their supports at the start of all of these fights, so you can throw these extra lives on the, the Shadow Fiend, these cheeses onto the Ursa to give him a second wind in the fight, and it just doesn't seem to matter because they're just not dealing enough damage. It doesn't really feel like the Ursa is really ever a threat. He's not able to get on top of any of these key heroes to bring them down. The Axe is just being a complete menace with this Blink Blade Mail initiations now, and all of a sudden Navi just... Well, I mean, it doesn't really, even not even all of a sudden, it just feels like a, a few fights in a row where they're just unable to really capitalize on having an Aegis advantage. And that's that's got to be the combination. Uh, I mean, I think this ward was absolutely the, the MVP of that whole entire Roshan fight, right? Not only did it spot out all of the rotations that Navi were doing, which allowed Bears to, to push in mid and take this tier two, um, during that setup time, but it also spotted out some of the heroes like this this Rubik who is sitting in the side. That was a quick instant kill, a numbers advantage going the way of bears. And then uh, some of the following uh, uh, supporting cast of Navi fell also because of that vision. It seems like vision and initiation is uh, something that is severely lacking for Navi, and it's something we talked about during the draft. It's going to be a big problem in their mid game. They may have these strong fighting cores um, that can all scale pretty well into the late game, but it doesn't mean much if you're only getting kited around constantly. That was before the level 25 Queen of Pain talent, so now the spell life still kicks in, and Fata with Mjolnir, and almost like he almost has enough money for a Hex as well, becomes a major concern for Na'Vi in these fights, and it feels like Na'Vi are lacking the damage output. They've gone for the, the kind of three core lineup, but these cores are uh, lacking that supporting utility hero. The supports themselves are just so squishy. We see them melt time and time again in these fights, and Bears are able to get a lot more value out of their slider, their axe, than what Navi are getting out of their their core heroes, like their Weaver, their their Ursa. Bears don't want to lose that tier two tower. No need for it when they're in such a commanding position. So they're going to push out the mid lane. Top is still pushed in, and that's where they're headed. They, I think they still want to keep the pressure on the base here. Uh, as soon as they've alleviated uh, the that, that pressure on the mid lane that Nami were trying to put out there, they go straight back up. They're going to take the shrine, it looks like, first and try and determine what they want to do from there. Yeah, they probably feel like they've reached a point where they can take any fight Navi it seems like a more like all right let's let's split push a bit be pesky be annoying keep bears on the back foot so they can try and buy some more time to I mean complete another item or two get a buyback try to think gets an assault caress but that's only going to be a minor improvement in in Navi's overall fight doesn't really solve the the issues we're seeing them constantly run into and all right man it seems like Yapsor maybe has an idea of what's going on but Uses the wrong tree path. Oh, now we'll find him. RMN is going to be the first one jumped on here, but on the right-hand side, they are trying to finish up Rev. One for one exchange here. Fada fearlessly okay. blinking forward with that level 25. Biver. It's going to be spotted out here, but no disables on the side of Fada. Not yet, anyway. Trying to finish off that side device. They lose an axe for a support ogre, and they're still blinking forward, trying to charge and take fights to Na'Vi. The battle more for Bears is just knowing where Na'Vi are and what lanes are kind of being split pushed, if anything. You oh, fight around your shrine here. Looks like Na'Vi are considering it. Pycat's going to jump forward. They actually managed to get the stun on Afada. This is big, but he managed to get a four staff, and now they turn around and gets a plate mail and a full heal back up. Dendi's being chased away by Firo and Pycat. He may get one with the help of General. He's going to have some shrine help as well, but I don't think he stands a chance against all these heroes. Sure enough, he gets kited. He gets stunned. And uh, Navi, 
they they saw four versus four, and as you said, they they had uh, a better exchange, right? They lost their ogre, but they they took away the axe away from bears, and they had the shrine advantage as well. And they st they tried to fight it out; it still wasn't good enough to beat bears. Yeah, that right idea and approach where it's like, all right, let's burst down this corp before the blade mail kicks in. But it's kind of like versing a satanic. If you don't kill that hero during your your lockdown. They're going to turn it around on you and suddenly heal up to full and you've just wasted a lot of key spells. Oh, Dendi. Oh, no. Dendi, Yapsor, and Firo. They come once in with the Infest combination. Find that kill with Navi now down 30 seconds on the Ursa and 70 on the SF. That could be multiple lanes of racks being taken by bears. Yeah, I think that may almost just be the killing blow at this point. There's so little that you can do to defend. All right, man. Nice four staff there. Still going to be caught by Forev. Ultimately, Navi are just trying to buy time here with their supports. They are going to be forced back by General, who does manage to get a, a ranged Rax. A little bit surprised they care so much about yeah. General. They... What? How many TPs was that? Like, send... Wow. Just one hero back. I mean, I guess you have to choose which hero defend, since, like, a Avenge isn't going to be able to defend that lane of Rax against a Weaver, but... That was a, a dead Shadow Fiend Ursa Ogre for... I mean, the Ursa was about to respawn, but just Shadow Fiend being dead for how long he was, it felt like that should be guaranteed one lane of Rax. Like, I'm looking at this like, are they going to even have to GG up? But again, they're, they're in such a strong dominant position, they immediately go back the other way. Bata's got upgraded to the Bloodthorn now. And General Bata. has to be careful not to get silenced. They're not going to be able to catch either one of these heroes. They don't have that extra disable. Oh, Shikuchi just before the... Oh, he actually gets oh, the catch. Him. Forev finally gets the call needed. They get General. They can force the buyback now. Fada, again, you could see the change of playstyle. As soon as he hits level 25, he is just fearless. He pops the blade mail as soon as any damage comes his way. Bounces back. They'll finish off that tier 3. A general buyback has it's been forced. Not Kate He's actually going to be able to jump onto him. Swap goes down. Fada's still going to be good. Pops the Blade Mail, jumps back in, managed to get the Sonic Wave, but a Blade Mail's going to wear out. Maybe PyCat can finish him off. So is Forev down. Firo managed to pick up RMN. Yapser went for the back line there, trying to force Dendi out of an awkward position. Will turn around and manage to get PyCat before he dies to Dendi's hand. Now another buyback. Firo trying to go for Dendi. He knows he's not making out of this one alive. He just hoped to be able to kill another quarter of Navi. That's not going to happen, though. Oh. Navi, a brilliant hold, it seems. That co-op, I, I, I mean, I look at that co-op like, how do you stop this Queen of Pain? There was, yeah. With the Arcane Rune, Blink had a 2.6 second cooldown. 2.6 second cooldown? <laughs> how, how is that a thing in Dota, you know? <laughs> that doesn't sound like it should exist in any fashion, but they managed to lock down Fata as once he just blinked in one, one too many times aggressively, catch him without the Blade Mail on, and they actually burst him down, so... Yeah, I think he... he... <laughs> I think that was, uh, Fada made some major error there, because he got swap saved, yeah, and, but I think he still had, like, he was still spamming blade mail, so he popped the blade mail as soon as he's no longer stunned, but he's swapped out to safety, and then he decides, well, my blade mail's up, I'm gonna oh, blink yeah. back in, but then the blade mail, like, he only had half the duration, he gets the sonic wave off, but Pycat's like, oh, your blade mail's down, now. Nah, well, I'll just take this kill. Definitely a, a misplayed team fight for me, it is, it's very hard to play these, like, level 25 heroes, considering all the, the active spells he's got, in these late game fights, but Navi doing a good job of punishing him at the right time, and suddenly they take this, some tier twos. This this game not over just yet, and Certainly one more not. kill on someone like Fata. That's a that's a potential dieback without Queen of Pain. I think Bears actually really struggle to team fight. Oh, absolutely. Navi, I think, know that, and they want to try and find that pick using this smoke of theirs. I mean, despite being you know. Strength heroes, these heroes, Slardar, Axe, uh, and even Firo's Lifestealer, they do not want to be on the front lines. That's Queen of Pain's job. So without that frontliner, they really won't have the opportunities for uh, the same kind of opportunities for initiation and counter initiation that they would uh, without him. So uh, I think Fada, they, uh, as a whole, Bears got to be really careful right now because they had this game in the back. They had it. They had it locked on, and then a bad team fight, and Navi pressuring real hard. I love that they're not playing scared at all. The jump forward here from Yapsir. They're going to try and get General here with a call. The lockdown, the magic missile. They got him with the sonic wave. That's two dead with no buyback, and now Navi. They try and turn. Dendi gets off the ultimate. Pycat pops his enrage, turns against Fada, but a swap out saves him once again. Dendi, he doesn't even now put enough damage to kill Forev of all heroes. So in the end, the fairy tale ends. Navi... 
They're not going to make the triumphant comeback in this game two to push to a game three. They're going to lose multiple heroes without buyback. It's only Dendi who has his, and Bears are likely to close out the game now. Yeah. Very, some, suddenly it became a very volatile game all of a sudden. Not quite the ending I was expecting for this one, but really, I mean, testament to Na'Vi and their resolve as far as making Bears play it out, almost putting themselves in a position, well, they did put themselves in a position where they could win the game, but... It was followed up, the uh, recklessness of Bears was followed up by a bit more calculated play, and now we'll see them secure at least a melee racks, possibly some more. No Ursa, no Weaver, just a Shadow Fiend buyback to play around, and Dendi gonna have to commit that one, and then probably still not really be able to fight. He's also missing a lot of damage because of the lack of souls. So fighting is not really gonna be all too easy for him. Tier three being chipped away. Another buyback. This one's going to come out of Rev to make sure they have full five while Navi are lacking two of their members. Rev comes in. Yule Scepter set up the kill onto RMN. Fado's going to go for the back lines, trying to target Dendi, who managed to disjoint that Shadow Strike and blink himself away. Biver makes his way to the fountain for a full heal. Navi are going to have to fight against Mega Creeps, and they still need to stall this throne push for another 15 seconds for Pycat. It just doesn't seem like they have the damage necessary. Last tier fours are going to fall. Forev's going to be able to catch Biver here. Yamso in the back lines does manage to get Dendi once again. Dendi dropping lower and lower. The Sonic Wave finished them off. And even as these other cores start coming up, now they're lacking some of their support. General is here. He immediately gets shut down. Yapsor, he ends up falling to Pycat's hand, but Pycat will be eliminated by the other four of Bears. That will be Na'Vi losing this game too, and Bears winning the series. They won against Adfinim 2-0, and they've now won against Na'Vi 2-0 as well. So impressive performance, impressive debut of this new yep. European team. They now guaranteed a spot in the top four playoff bracket, which will start, I guess, in a couple of days' time once we know the other three teams to join them. But yeah, very, very strong stuff from Bears. They showed a good variety uh, in their picks. I mean, we did see Slada Life still two games in a row, but more looking at like like Forev as well as Fata. We saw uh, different heroes in different games from those two players. Uh, and even going back to their first best of three, we saw different looks where they had the Fero Shadow Fiend at mid. So it's not just like a, a predictable, let's keep running the same thing kind of approach from uh, Bears at this point. And to me, probably the biggest difference in where, where these teams is like kind of the, the four position plays. Yapsor has been so high impact. He was in 32 of their 38 kills. He had 31 assists this game. And not, I mean, I think he's played bad, but he's on these heroes where he's just not going to ever have as much impact. You're an Ogre Magi. Like your impact after the laning stage is never going to be comparable to what Slada brings to the table as an initiator. Yeah, I think there was multiple times in these team fights where I saw Yapsor, you know, immediately, even sometimes without Firo, target Dendi and go for, you know, a crush or whatever in the back lines, and that always forced Dendi to, to play more defensively. Sometimes he have even had to ult, and the ult would just kind of do a little bit of damage to Yapsor and maybe touch uh, some of the other heroes on the outer edges, but it certainly was not the high-impact ultimates that uh, Dendi really hoped for, and that was Yapsor um, and his suffocating presence, it seems, to the, uh, <laughs> the range cores of Na'Vi. Yeah, both Yapsor and, and Four are playing a fairly similar role, but the fact they've got two of these players that can be so disruptive in a team fight, and then Fata and Fira have both proven to be very consistent, reliable carries uh, and explosive in their own ways. I mean, Fata ends the game 21, 1, and 11. It's hard to really fault anything. His one death did present Navi like this small glimmer of hope where <laughs> you're like thinking, like, oh, is this game yeah. actually going to swing back Navi's way? But I mean, if not for that, we'd be like saying like, oh my God, Fata did the entire game, 21 kills. Like, I mean, he, he had a phenomenal game as well. Everyone on Bears is looking very strong in their own respective right. So Bears to the playoffs. Navi will have to hang in there, wait for their opponent, see if they can actually get into the playoffs as well still. Uh, we're going to jump to the other side of the bracket, though, or sorry, the other group, Group B, where we have Liquid versus Cloud9. That should be a, a very interesting one. Um, I have lost 40 minutes. Is that, is that in 40 minutes? Yeah, 40, yeah, I think 40 so. minutes it looks like. All right, so we are going to be uh, waiting around a little bit. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to start a, a little bit early, but starting time is in 40 minutes for our next best of three. So stick around, guys. <laughs> 